All right, let's implement feature tracking. Uh, so I'm going to do this just for two frames for now, because that's the simplest way to do it. I'm going to load in two frames from our taxi, taxi sequence, um, and we'll append that into that little data structure vid, so frame one, frame two. By the way, I'm multiplying by 1.0 here because I want to convert these floating point values, sorry, these um, integer values into floating point values, hence the multiplication by 1.1, little Python trick for getting floating point values so I can do floating point calculations. All right, so this is the, 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 the meat of the code. And so let me just first orient you before going into the details. I'm going to initialize Vx and Vy. That's going to be my motion estimation. Notice that I'm dividing the dimensions of the image by four. I'm going to skip every fourth pixel. Feature tracking can be very expensive because notice here I have four nested loops here. What are they? The top two loops are going across the image, x to y, in steps of four. And then here is the search in a little patch around every, where every pixel is centered. So I've got four nested loops, very, very costly. And so I'm going to subsample by four the same way, I, by the way, I did with the motion estimation. Every other pixel, here I'm doing every fourth pixel. So this, this loop here, this loop here is going through all the pixels. And then what I'm saying is making sure I'm in bounds here, so I'm not looking at any pixel that is out of bounds. I grab the little box, a little block, that corresponds to a five by five patch of image. Why five? That's just one that I picked. Could have been three by three, could have been nine by nine. Where's the tension here? Small patches are more likely to, to um, abide by the assumption. That is that the patch is the same from point one to point two, but they're also less likely to have any distinct characteristics. Larger pet patches are likely to have more distinct characteristics, but then you're you're estimating motion across something, maybe a car and a background. So you want to pick this compromise in between. And so I picked five by five, which is a pretty um, good sized patch, not too big, not too small. So I grabbed that block right there. And that's what I now at time one, I need to find that at time two. And I'm going to do that using that little grid search. So these two for loops are searching 10 pixels to the left, 10 pixels to the right, 10 pixels above, 10 pixels down. So baked into here is an assumption that something doesn't move more than 10 pixels. If you're worried about something that moves more than 10 pixels, well, just increase that bound there. Again, there's some tension. The more you increase that, the slower the computation. But if you make it too small, you may miss something that moves outside of that bound. And then what I'm going to do is grab the block at, frame, at the next moment in time, um, centered at this point right here, and then I'm simply going to compute the absolute value of the difference between them. I could have squared it, I could have done anything. This is just the absolute value of the difference between the block at frame one, the block at frame two. I'm going to uh, ask, is that, is that smaller than the minimum difference that I've seen yet? I'm trying to find the patch that is most similar. And if it is, then I've got a new min, that's my velocity. And I keep iterating here inside these two nested uh, for u, for v loops until I find the block that matches the closest in frame, frame two from frame one. And then do that again for every pixel, every pixel, every pixel. And then I've got that same little trick where I'm now going to median filter the estimated motions uh, to integrate out any small outliers or noise. And now just a little bit of code to visualize. Um, there's my little visualization right here, which is the, the quiver. And when you do that, you get something that looks like this. Same, now, remember that we, we had this pretty similar plot. We got the one car coming in. We got the one car turning the corner. Look at that taxi turning the corner. What do you notice here is that we only really have three motions, it seems. We have a horizontal motion at the back of the car. We have a vertical motion in front of the car and then a few diagonal ones. It seems more discretized than the differential one, which seems sort of smoother. Well, of course it's more discretized. Why is it more discretized? Because I'm only able to search on the lattice. So one of the nice things about the differential technique is you're, I'm asking what is the direction in a continuous domain and the magnitude in a continuous domain. Here with this feature tracking, I can only tell you within one pixel where something is, motion, is moving. So it's a much coarser uh, estimate of motion. 
Now, where is feature tracking better and where is differential better? It depends. It depends on a number of things. It depends on the sequence. It depends on how much noise is in there. It depends on the content. It depends on the motion. Um, is it a, a big motion or small motion? The, the, the classic uh, conventional wisdom says that if you have these very small motions, then the differential techniques are advisable because they're able to make these very small uh, uh, measurements. If you have bigger, coarser moments, things, motions, things moving over many, many pixels, then feature tracking may be better so you don't have to worry about the size of the derivative, you don't have to worry about the Gaussian pyramid, you just do this grid search, a coarse grid search over a bigger area. So, motion estimation, why do, I, why do we care about this? Well, let's see, self-driving car seems it would be useful um, to be able to detect motion in the scene, and these are the types of techniques that you're going to be using for that. Um, surveillance uh, video. Um, has something moved in the scene? Where is it moving? How fast is it moving? And then this really is just the beginning, however. The motion estimation tells you something is moving, but it doesn't tell you what it is. All right, so for example, is it a pedestrian? Is it a dog? Is it a paper bag flying through the street? Is it another car? Is it something I have to worry about or not worry about? And then we get into questions of classification from the appearance and the motion. But to get there, you've got to start with motion estimation, and now we have two ways to do it. The differential motion and the feature tracking, and of course there are others that are variants on this theme.